This video is brought to you by CatBeast.com. Design your own custom snapbacks and hats. How's it going guys? My name's Wilson. Before I start this video, I would like to give a shout out to my sponsor, CatBeats.com. CatBeats.com is your one-stop shop for custom snapbacks made from people all around the world. You can design your own custom hats, snapbacks, beanies, and finding other great designs that suit your fitting. Now on to the video. We all love big surprises, the unexpected, random players we never think to break out but almost 2 months into the NBA season, 6 guys averaging above 30 points a game and here are the 5 guys right here, the 5 leading scorers who can't be stopped absolutely putting in the show. It's no surprise that Luka and Giannis putting up monster numbers as they should while Tatum and Stephen Curry both very elite, Kevin Durant also 30 points a game but how about the emergence of SGA? Shea Gildress Alexander having a fantastic season if he somehow wins the scoring title might go down as the least expected scoring champion of our lifetime from averaging 24 and a half points a season ago to now around 31 a game before the season started SGA's name wouldn't even be in many's top 10 points per game prediction leader what a fantastic story he is another surprising breakout how about the Indiana Pacers Therese Halliburton potentially the assist leader, the first 25 games of the season, not so surprising if you've been following his career all along. And another guy who is breaking out this season, none other than 34 year old, absolutely amazing Brooke Lopez, the 7 foot monster, now an excellent 3 point shooter, leading the NBA in shot blocks at 2.9 a game. Year 15, unprecedented for a candidate for DPOY. If you watched my last video, you know that nothing's out of the ordinary when it comes to Brooke, the true definition of a player who changed his play style the most in recent years. But now, let's take a look at 8 of the most unexpected players to lead the league in a statistical category over the last 10 seasons that would have absolutely shocked you. Starting with Lance Stevenson, leader of triple doubles, 5 total the 2014 season. Nowadays, many players can get 5 in 2 weeks if they really want it. The 23 year old at the absolute peak of his NBA powers averaged nearly 14 a game, 7.2 rebounds, 4.6 assists but compare that to the following season of Russell Westbrook, the star of a triple double phenomenon. Russ gave us hints all the way back in 2015, recorded 11 total while Kevin Durant was out 2 thirds of that year, 7.3 boards, 8.6 assists, blows Stevenson's numbers out of the water. Since then, every triple double leader has gotten over 10 each of the following years. While Lane's most effective style having the ball in his hands, a liability without it, only the Pacers understood how to utilize him. That's why he couldn't last for another team for more than one full season. Back then, the triple double was a super rarity, an amazing feat that's now considered diminished value after Russell Westbrook. Pace and style also a lot different. A slower NBA, the bigs of Roy Hibber and now Jefferson still super effective. League average 101 points compared to around 111 each of the last four years. Three point attempts increased by 40% compared to now, leading to longer rebounds due to a lack of triple double before 2015. A gap between 2009 to 2014, where nobody had more than seven for a season, even crazier. In 2012, Rondo had six total. No one else in the league had more than one that season, with 18 total that regular season, compared to 130 total in 2022. Stevenson having multiple triple doubles by All Star break made it a big enough deal for many believing he was and should have gotten in the all-star game over teammate Roy Hibber. The versatility and aggression, the primary ball handler, Vogel had PG and George Hill at the wing, pick and pop four and David West while giving the ball to Hibber down low and option two. Also Lance playing for a big contract, number one for guards and rebounding, only he, LeBron and KD to put up numbers of 14, 7 and 5 that season. Every game he put up at least 5 assists. Indy went 29 and 4 that regular season, 8 and 2 in the playoffs. The Despite his accomplishments, the team more remembered for their second half breakdown, collapsed chemistry, locker room issues, to getting in a fistfight with midseason accusation Evan Turner. 
to blowing in LeBron's ear, falling to Miami in six, became one of the most enticing free agents, only to end up on a three-year $27 million deal with Charlotte, a journeyman since, never became an all-star, now in and out the league, the biggest what if if Lance stayed with the Pacers his entire career. Brian Roberts of New Orleans Pelicans, out the league since 2017, five seasons, the now 37-year-old most remembered for leading the NBA in free throw percentage, 94% for 2014, started 42 of 7 72 games, 34 win Pelicans, just his second season, already age 28, made 125 with 133 foul shots, just passing the minimum made to qualify, just a shade under 91% for his career, would have tied him for first with Steph Curry, a decent score, money from mid-range, but not good on defense, only 6'1", 170, only diehard NBA fans remember his name nowadays. CJ McCollum, free draw leader 2017, even shot higher in a time where Curry and Durant both in their primes. 91.2 to be exact, not counting the 2023 season. CJ shot 81% his first 9 years. Despite a very small career sample size, played just 80 games that year, but very streaky from 3 to no surprise, 2017 was also CJ's best mark from the field at 48%, a career 45% shooter from long range at 42 compared to 39 on average, so not that big of a sample size, but given how CJ went from a 91% free throw shooter to under 70% a few years later, an absolute travesty of a head scratcher. How does that make any sense? Attempting 3.7 free throws, shooting at an extremely high rate, streaky mid-range jump shooter, CJ the anti-Harden. The games he struggled doesn't draw quite enough fouls like the Jameses or the Rosens of the world, even for the 2022 season. Shooting very few from the line for a high shot taker might take him 5 games to go 7 of 10, so missing 1 hurts his percentage even more. Since the outlier year, McCollum shot below 79% from the charity stripe since. Darren Collison, 3 point field goal percentage, lasted 3 games for the desperate 2022 Lakers after retiring for 2 seasons and just his second to last full season. The then 30 year old point guard shot lights out for a surprising 48 win Pacers, a league best, nearly 47% from deep in 6.3 attempts for his career, a solid 39% outside shooter, started 64 of 69 games, while Vic Oladipo got most of the credit, the former UCLA star also number 1 in assist to turnover ratio, went 49.5% from the field, 47 from deep and 88 from the free throw line, very calm point guard, used appropriately when playing less than 30 minutes, gets timely buckets, underratedly clutch, both deadly from mid-range and 3, super adaptable, whether being a third option or get consecutive buckets, absolutely worth his signing of 2 years 20 million back in 2017, to all of a sudden, retiring at 31, hasn't been close to the same player since taking a long time off. When Indy was supposed to tank after PG was gone, Collison simply not that type of guy outside of the 2014 Clippers, Collison never truly played for a real contender. Brad Watermaker, number one in free throw shooting, 92.6%, 2020 with the Celtics, given his short stint in the league, just four seasons, shooting an astonishing nearly 93% from the stripe, insanely impressive, played 71 games that year, of course, just qualified by making one extra foul shot for safety, 126 of 136, less than two attempts a game, 90.7% for his career, making 280 of 339 total, after being terrible from the line in college, 140 48% as a freshman at Pitt, less than 200 NBA games played, the Philly native's name will always appear in the free throw history books, also joining Celtic legend Larry Bird, leading the association in accuracy from the stripe, when people look up Watermaker's name 20 years from now, they'd be like who finished his collegiate career just shooting 72% from the line. George Hill, leading the league in 3 point percentage with the 2020 Bucks, 46%, higher than JG Reddick, Seth Curry, and Duncan Robinson that year. Imagine they all have a 3 point shootout, 100 attempts, 99% of you would pick Hill to finish last place to be honest. From looking wash the season before, making just 31.5% of his 3's on 2.6 attempts, to 1.4 mix on 3 attempts, just 48 of 153, to 81 of 176, a little boost for the back to back number one seeds, improving his mark by 15% for the 33 year old when just about everybody that age already a finished product. Nowadays, he'll not even close to being a great outside shooter. Coach Bud loves him though, while many Buck fans don't like him very much. Absolutely livid, he'll got more minutes 2022 playoffs than the younger Javon Carter. 
CP3 leading the association in free throw percentage, 93.4% 2021, roughly 87 for his career, third in the 80s first nine seasons till finally getting to 90 in 2015 to just over 89 next two years to nearly 92% with the 2018 Rockets to then just 84% the following season edging out Damon Gallo despite not taking a ton of foul shots 169 of 181 excellent the next season hit the same amount but needed 21 more attempts when looking back at Paul's career having the highest free throw percentage for a season probably his most surprising feat nobody views Paul as a 90% plus foul shooter Julius Randle minutes per game 2021 averaging a full minute and 110 more than Fred Van Vliet when it comes to being the star player on a typical led team you're you're guaranteed to play heavy minutes, only missed one game after being known as an empty stats role player for years, about 29 minutes per game his first 6 seasons, a huge increase, one would think the more Randall plays, the more inefficient he'd be, but posted monster numbers of over 24, 10 and 6, 41% from 3. Able to sustain that level of efficiency, maybe that's why he melted down that postseason to shooting under 30% in 36 minutes versus Atlanta, earned a 4 year deal worth 117 with a fearless borderline out of control style of play. As a former 7th overall pick, Randall is supposed to be a journeyman after a disappointing first couple of seasons, but will always have that impressive 2021 year, becoming an all-star, making second team all-NBA. Honorable mentions include Draymond Green 2017, led the league in steals per game at 2, his most iconic regular season performance, being the only man to record a triple-double without points, 10 steals, 11 boards, and 10 assists, 4 points, one would think a Kawhi or Jimmy Butler would lead the pack in steals. Deals, but right there, just a few tenths of a percentage point separated. As much as many might despise Streamer and his antics, no doubt he's a guaranteed Hall of Famer whether you like it or not. While Pascal Siakam 2022 led the league in minutes played at almost 38 a game, from emerging as a good role player to a number one star on the team came a long way. Thank you so much for watching this video. Which players on this list shock you most about leading the league in a random statistical category? Is it Lance Stevenson leading the NBA in triple doubles back in 2014? Darren Collinson, three point percentage? CJ McCollum, a low 80s percent career foul shooter to being number one at one point? Or George Hill leading the NBA in three point percentage when he's not even an all time great shooter? Or a player by the name of Brian Roberts making his name forever in the free throw history? History books. Whoa! Thanks again for watching, everybody. So, if you're new to my channel and want to learn more about NBA history, hit the subscribe button. More good stuff coming soon. I love basketball. Hopefully, you guys enjoying the NBA season. I'll keep updating on some amazing content. I'll see you next time and hope you guys enjoying the end of the year and finish strong.